are the three identities um, that resonate sometimes strongest with me. Um, the one I'm going to talk to today about is, is my new title of architect. Um, as I um, completed that path uh, last month to become officially a licensed architect. Um, it's something uh, that I wanted to do since I, I was a small child. And as I got older and realized the importance of having marginalized, marginalized populations be a part of the design process um, that began to shape our built environment, our communities, our villages, our homes, our workplaces, um, it's important to have um, um, uh, marginalized people present at that table. Uh, and with that, I just like by a show of hands, how many of you in here personally, not like a famous one, but personally know an architect? Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. If that architect is a white architect, put your hand down. How many hands are up? Besides me, I mean, I know I'm an architect. How many of you know a minority architect? So out of 89,000 licensed architects in this country, maybe about a half a dozen you know a minority architect. Um, so I don't know the stats across the board uh, for Af African Americans. Uh, there's less than 3,000 architects, um, and the worst figure for that is 0.3 percent of those are Black women. So less than 400, about 350. Every Black woman architect in this country knows what number they are. When uh, they get licensed, they get a number to know you're the 353rd. Uh, black women should be licensed as an architect in this country. I, I don't identify as a black woman, but I do identify as a Native American architect. And that figure, um, we don't have all the stats, but there's combined Native American architects and engineers, there's less than 400 in this country. Again, out of 89,000 licensed architects in this country. So, there's a platform to help grow these numbers. It's a national organization of minority architects. Uh, I'm a member of this um, organization. It's really great. Um, and we're working to increase those numbers. Um, the day after President-elect, or the day after, not President-elect anymore, the day after the election results, uh, the, the head, one of the heads, the executive vice president of the American Institute of Architects came out, and let, let me just read this. Um, his, his statement the day after elections was, the AIA and its 89,000 members are committed to working with President-elect Trump to address the issues our country faces, particularly strengthening the nation's aging infrastructure. And so I want you all to think about that, the role architects play. So if, if we were to build a wall, architects would be involved with that process. If we're to build prisons, Architects are directly involved in that process. For build schools, hospitals, all these things, architects play a role. And so it's 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 very sickening and, and disheartening to know that a person spoke out on behalf of us, which I think other people have mentioned before that it's not okay for one person to speak uh, on, on behalf of the group. And as a result, I was very proud to know that my my profession immediately fought back against that. The Rawa hashtag not my AIA is still happening, right? Um, and so part of part of that response that Robert Ivey put out there and then retracted and restated um, uh, from from the backlash um, uh, through uh, the day the Zionist protest, which happened yesterday in about 15 cities across the country. Did anybody hear about the Zionist protest day happening here? Uh, I know there were some participants here earlier. Um, we held this workshop yesterday, and the idea of that. And let me pull that up. It was started a couple of years ago, this design justice platform to address, um, or I'll read it. Design justice advocates for the dismantling of the privilege and power structures that use the design profession to maintain systems of injustice. It requires a profession to design for the disempowered, the oppressed, and the disinherited who bear the brunt of the injustice in our built environment. This is significant, the role that we play in either creating better spaces for people or making them worse. If you, if you take a moment to think about how much of the built environment informs their daily life, you know, that architects play a role in 
who we create space for. Um, just take a moment to think about that. And so yesterday, um, hundreds of people gathered to, uh, it was a multidisciplinary effort to bring together architects, urban designers, landscape architects, and a variety of disciplines together to look at how um, we could collectively um, um, address social justice issues. Um, as from a design perspective, looking at the built environment um, as beginning to not continue to create some of the problems, but begin to address them. So I would encourage you all, um, if you're interested in joining this effort, um, it's, it's, it's going to continue, and you can go check out the website. It's designjusticeplatform.com. You can go there to get more information, share your story, and uh, continue that conversation that we started. Well, we started two years ago, but it happened again yesterday. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you.